Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now, it was seen that DNA was the prominent genetic material in most of the organisms. But in some of the organisms, like some exceptions are the viruses, where instead of DNA, RNA was found to be the genetic material. So, the question was, sometimes DNA acts as genetic material, sometimes RNA does the same. So, is there any other option? So, how do we know? So, what decides that which molecule can be a genetic material? I mean, why is it that not neither protein nor carbohydrate nor lipids can be genetic material? It is only the nucleic acids which have the property to become or to behave as a genetic material. So, there were certain characteristics or there were certain properties or you can say there were certain criteria which defined who can be a genetic material. So whoever, whichever molecule satisfies all these criteria can be a genetic material. So let us look at the criteria to be a genetic material. Now there were many contenders to be a genetic material. It can be proteins, fats, carbohydrates, DNA, RNA, lipids. So they are all contenders who can be a genetic material. But let us see how many of them are able to satisfy the criteria to be a genetic material. So first of all, a genetic material should be capable of replicating itself. Now when I, when I say replicating, what does it mean? Replicating means to create a copy of itself. Because these genetic material, what do they do? They actually uh, does a job during the process of cell division. Now when we say that a cell is dividing to form two new cells, that means you have to provide the genetic material to the new cells. Only then they will have the traits inherited from their parents. Correct. So now who will provide them in order to provide the genetic material you actually need to create a copy of your own and then give one copy to the newly formed cell. It is very simple. It is like let us suppose you have uh, your notes with you. Now if you want to give the same notes to your friend who stays in some other place. So you cannot, sh both cannot share the same notes. So what will you do? You will create a Xerox of the same note and you will give one copy to your friend and you will keep one copy with yourself. That's how it will be, right? So now that means you have to replicate it. So if, if any molecule is going to act as a genetic material, that means it is going to play a very important role during cell division, that is during formation of new cells. So that material has to supply one copy of it to the newly formed cell. So it should be capable of replicating itself. And proteins, carbohydrates or lipids, they cannot replicate. Only nucleic acid can replicate and that is due to the base pairing concept. So if you have a nucleic acid with say one strand, you can create the other strand because you know what would be the uh, other strand. For example, let us suppose if you have one strand of DNA, let me draw it simple. Let us suppose this is one strand of DNA and in that one strand you have a sequence like this. So now with this, Another strand can actually be created because we know what is going to be there in the other strand because of the concept of complementary base pairing. So A will always pair up with T, T will always pair up with A, C will always pair up with G and G will always pair up with C. So that is how you can actually create the other strand and this concept actually helps in the replication of the nucleic acid. So due to this property, they are able to replicate themselves and this concept of base pairing is not present in any of the other molecules. Therefore, they cannot replicate themselves. So if you see the first criteria itself is not being satisfied by anybody else other than nucleic acids. Other than this, the molecule should be chemically as well as structurally stable. So now if you compare the two molecules in nucleic acids, that is DNA and RNA, you will see that the structure of DNA is much more stable than that of RNA. That is due to the presence of the double strand. In RNA, you just have one strand. But in DNA, you actually have two strands which provides it more stability. So that means DNA is preferred over RNA as far as stability is concerned. Now, in Griffith experiment, we saw that the heat killed strain also, the heat killed strain, the S strain, which was already killed by heat, 
that strands get temporarily separated due to the heat under unfavorable conditions. But later, the same thing comes back in the other R type of RNA. So basically that comes back because the two strands come back again. Right. So that means the chemical stability was seen in Griffith's experiment. So that is one thing which shows that DNA is very much stable structurally. Now, if you talk about the chemical stability, you will see if you look at the structure of RNA. So in RNA, you have ribose sugar and the ribose sugar has got two OH groups. So if you look at the structure of ribose sugar, you will see that there are two OH groups. This is how the ribose sugar will look like. And if you look at deoxyribose sugar, you will have only one OH. This O will not be there. That is why it is deoxyribose. Now, due to the presence of two OH group, the RNA, that is the ribose sugar, is highly reactive. Now, if anything which is more reactive will be less stable because it will always have a tendency to react and form something else. So the stability will be less. less. But in DNA, Due to the presence of only one OH group, it is less reactive and therefore more stable. So both chemically as well as structurally, DNA is more stable than RNA and that is why it is more preferred over RNA as a genetic material. Provides scope for mutation which can lead to evolution. So the material should be such, the material or the molecule should be such that it can bring about some new changes as well. It should not be that only the traits are getting inherited from parents to offsprings and the offsprings are just clones of their parents. There should also be some new traits. There should also be some mutation. And these mutation over a period of time can give rise to evolution. Now, if you talk about mutation there, you will see that the less stable molecule can bring about more mutation. So in this case, if you compare DNA and RNA, RNA being less stable will have faster mutation. Therefore, if you take the example of viruses which have RNA as the genetic material, they have a very short lifespan, but they have faster evolution because the mutations are faster and many mutations over a period of time, they lead to evolution. So the faster evolution in viruses is due to RNA. Capable of expressing itself in the form of Mendelian characters. You remember the Mendelian uh, rules of inheritance which we discussed. So there we saw that how the traits get inherited from one generation to another. So this genetic material should also be able to express itself in the same form the way the Mendelian factors were expressing themselves over generation after generation. So what happens basically here is from DNA, RNA is synthesized. So DNA is capable of creating RNA and RNA is capable of creating or synthesizing proteins and proteins will then control over the traits. So that is how it, the entire process is actually handled. Now we will look at the detail of each and every step involved in this entire process. So for now, I think you are clear with the criteria to be a genetic material. So now, why is DNA a preferred genetic material over RNA? So some of the points we already discussed in the previous slide, like DNA is structurally more stable. We saw that due to the double stranded structure of DNA. Chemically also it is more stable because it is less reactive than RNA due to the presence of only one OH group. Whereas in RNA, that is ribose sugar, there are two OH groups present. So it is more reactive and therefore less stable. DNA has double standard structure which provides better ability to rectify errors during replication. Now both DNA and RNA are capable of replicating themselves. That is both of them can create their own copy. Now there are chances that errors might occur during copying. Because anywhere error can occur, right? So when you are copying, a, making a copy of a DNA, so you need to ensure that all the bases are being correctly copied. You, there shouldn't be even one A replaced with a G because that is going to make a huge difference later. So whatever errors happen during replication, DNA has better provision for correction. So proofreading mechanism is there in DNA and that proofreading mechanism works better due to the presence of the double stranded structure. And this is missing in RNA and proofreading is important because the more accurate the copying happens, the better it is because the more errors you have during replication, the more defects that might be there in the offspring. 
DNA can't code directly for protein synthesis and thus depends on RNA. So this is one way where RNA is having an edge over DNA. Now RNA directly will code for proteins. Now the sequence of base pairs or the sequence of bases on RNA directly is going to decide what would be the sequence of amino acids and those amino acids will form proteins. So RNA in a way doesn't depend on DNA for protein synthesis but DNA cannot directly synthesize protein. It has to synthesize RNA and RNA in turn will synthesize protein. So because of all these reasons, looking at all these factors, it was found that DNA is good for the storage of genetic material and RNA is good for the transmission of genetic material. So when you talk about DNA, it is good to store the genetic information. So all the information will be stored in DNA because DNA is more stable. So you should always keep your precious things in safe uh, places, right? That is why you would have seen that people keep all their valuables in bank, in a locker. They take up a locker and keep their valuables in bank. Why? Because it is more safe. So similarly, for storage, you need a more stable place. And out of DNA and RNA, DNA is more stable. So DNA is good for storage of the genetic material. But when it comes to transmission, what do we mean by transmission? Transmission means expressing the genetic traits. Now, whatever information is stored in DNA, you need to express it. How will you express it? By synthesizing proteins. Because once you synthesize the proteins, the traits will get expressed. For example, let us suppose that for eye color, right? Eye, your eye color is brown. What does that mean? The protein that is responsible to give brown color to your eye, that protein has been synthesized. And who synthesized that proteins? RNA synthesized that proteins. And who sent, who created that RNA? That RNA was created by DNA. So basically, RNA will help DNA to express the information which it has. So that is how RNA is useful. And what is the purpose of DNA? DNA will safely store the information. It will safely store the sequence of bases which give brown color to the eye. But it cannot directly synthesize the proteins and give brown color to the eye. It cannot do that. It needs RNA for that. So RNA is preferred. RNA is preferred for expression of the genetic information and DNA is preferred for storage of genetic information. Now because of the pros and cons, each of them have been assigned a job for which they are better suited. So yet another interesting question. Who came first, DNA or RNA? So we have been talking about DNA and RNA since quite some time. We talk, we've spoken about their structure. We saw the advantages of DNA over RNA and the advantages of RNA over DNA. But who came first? Who was discovered first? So that is interesting. Well, RNA was the first genetic material. Even though DNA is the preferred genetic material, DNA is the genetic material in most of the organisms today, except for few exceptions like viruses. But the truth is that RNA was the first genetic material. Now, how do we know that? RNA came first. Now, it was a famous scientist named Walter Gilbert. Somewhere around 1986, he gave an hypothesis saying that once upon a time, there existed something called as RNA world, where no DNA existed, it was all RNA. Now, this concept of RNA world was believed by some, were not believed by some, but this concept of RNA, there, there are certain evidences which show that, yes, RNA world existed. So, as per this hypothesis, the current life on Earth descends from an RNA world. So, it, it means to say that this RNA world is a sort of hypothetical world uh, where RNA performed all the functions which are today performed by DNA and proteins. So, that time RNA was the only thing existing which performed the functions of DNA, that is storage of genetic material. It performed its own role, that is expression of genetic material. Plus, it also performed certain roles of the proteins, I mean, which are today done by proteins. So that is what the hypothesis claims to be. Now, research is still going on currently to better understand the RNA functions and to validate the RNA world hypothesis. Because as I said, there are certain scientists who are in favor of this, but many of them even do not agree to it. 
So as per this, it says that DNA evolved from RNA with certain chemical modifications which made it more stable. That is what we say, right? There are mutations or there are changes and those changes which are favorable or which are for good, they over a period of time give rise to evolution. So similar thing happened with DNA as well. So sudden changes in RNA gradually which were for better stability, which were for better gradually evolved as DNA. And today we see that DNA is more preferred than RNA as a genetic material in most of the organisms. So if you talk about the role of RNA in during RNA world, it used it was used, being used for storage of genetic material and this is now performed by, today it is performed by DNA. It was also used for transmission of genetic material and this one is today performed by RNA. It is also used for catalytic and enzymatic activities. Today these are performed by proteins. So those days RNA took over all the functions of DNA, RNA as well as proteins and that is why it was known as RNA world because RNA was governing all the functions. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.